We got a treat today, everybody. Blue 42 and I got another date. We're going out to Saskatchewan. I gotta bring this load to Regina for tomorrow morning. And we gotta pick up a one ton pickup, a pickup truck. Gotta pick up a pickup. Tie that down onto here and bring it back, and we'll be back tomorrow evening sometime. Not sure what's under here. Ah, totes of some sort. Okay. Well, it's already all tied down for me. So there's not much I need to do. I got all the equipment I need for my reload. So we're ready to go to the races. I'm excited. I always love going on these overnights. Might even be, might even be a two-nighter, but I'm pretty sure I'll be back tomorrow evening. We'll see. I should unload this in Regina tomorrow, first thing in the morning. Run up to Saskatoon, which is what, three hours away? Be there midday, load up that pickup. It's just one, tie it down, and then it's a nine hour drive back. Oh, so it'll be late tomorrow that we're back, if, if at all tomorrow. Might just sleep in the truck and then go home in the morning the next day. Ah, we'll see what happens. We'll see that. All right. Let's go. All right, we're going to start by setting everything up in here. I like to have a bed that's made behind me. Satisfies my minor OCD. Believe me, I don't I don't have full-fledged OCD, but uh, certain things need to be organized for me. My bed needs to be made, okay? So, the blankets on here. Then I'll be ready to go. Doesn't take long. It makes you feel a whole lot better. That's gotta be the other way around. Which way is this? There we go. See? It doesn't have to be perfect either. It just has to be made. There we go. See? Isn't that much better? It'll make you feel better. Okay, I guess I really need all of this on right now. Well, I'm gonna grab fuel on my way out of Winnipeg, so you know what, I'll just leave this stuff on for now. I don't need this reflective vest on all the time, it's just sort of part of my regular garb already. I'm just so used to having it on, it's just, it's comfortable, it makes me feel safe. <laughs> I, I have all the stuff I need in here. Got my mask, got my chapstick, got my fuel cards, my ID, just in case I forget who I am. My wallet, everything. Right here, nice and close. I think we're ready to go. I think we're ready. Are you ready? I'm excited, we're in blue 42. We almost had to take this trip in a Volvo, uh, but the truck was not working with me this morning. I don't have any luck with trucks in the winter time, apparently truck didn't want to let the brakes release. This was uh, one of our Volvos. I was actually kind of looking forward to showing you the interior of some of our newer Volvos that we have, but as fate will have it, we're back in blue 42. Can't complain. This is my favorite truck. And I think they know it too, because when I went in there and I was like, uh, this truck that I'm in, it's not, it's not working. You have any others? I'm like, take 42. You read my mind. Thank you. Happy trucker right here. Ah, I just gotta, I guess I gotta organize a few more things here. I had to replace a fuse. One of my, uh, the outlet here that's charging my GPS wasn't working. So I put my brain to the problem solving mode and I found the fuse that was burnt out and I replaced it. That's one thing that this T680 is lacking, okay? I gotta, I always gotta give a little bit of criticism, even to the trucks that I really, really like. The criticism I have in this one, there's only two power outlets up here, okay? One there, one there. That's for my phone, that one's for my GPS. The Volvos have like 10. I'm exaggerating, but there should be one like up here somewhere for the GPS to be plugged into. And there should be, yeah, these two down here, plus maybe two more, at least one more. So there should be three down here, I think, and one up here for the GPS, and possibly one up here somewhere for the dash camera that I would have if I was on the highway full time. There should be a dash camera plug, GPS plug, and three power plugs down here. I think that would satisfy my desire for power. I'm just about ready to leave out the back gate here. 
just want to go make sure those straps are tight before I pull out of the yard. Checked them by hand before and they felt tight. I want to go and make sure now with the snipe. My snipe was in here. Where is it? There it is. Yep, there we go. Oh, oh. Okay, this is a really long one. I should go get the shorter one. Uh, okay, let's make sure this is... Okay, give them all at least one more click, right? Just to make sure that it's tight and not going anywhere. That one's tight. This one. Tight. 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 You can't trust the driver before you, even though they're probably a trustworthy person. So it's not a personal dig at them. It's just that you, uh, you gotta check for yourself. Doesn't matter who tied it down. Even if it was my dad who tied it down before me. I trust him that he would have done it right, but before I take it out on the road, I have to double check. Because once it's on the road, behind my truck, it's my responsibility. Oh, these are really loose, yikes. That's exactly why you check. Is that it? That's it. These orange ones here are just here to hold the tarps down. Looks like they're all in there pretty well. Okay. Giggity giggity. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. It's time to go. If you haven't watched my past videos in Blue 42, here's what we're working with. So far, it's my favorite truck on our fleet. Oops. There we go. Locked and loaded. Let's go grab fuel and we'll be off to Saskatchewan. Woo! Always excited to go to Saskatchewan. <laughs> I am actually, I am, I'm being honest. Haven't been there in a while again. Here we go, we've done our tug test to make sure that trailer is gonna come with us. Off we go. About 44,000 pounds on the trailer behind me. Flashing like that. Nice truck. Nice truck. So you notice now my signal isn't flashing as fast as it was before. Ah, we're on the ice here. Ah, when it flashes twice as fast as usual, that means you have a burnt out bulb. Now I checked all my bulbs before I left and all the lights were working as far as I was concerned. But as we were leaving, I guess it burnt out. Because when I turned my left turn signal on, it was flashing twice as fast as usual. This road for eight kilometers. So I turned around, went right back to the yard, and I realized it was my driver's side front signal was burnt out. The bulb was burnt out. So I replaced that real quick, and now we're on the way. It must have burnt out just as I pulled out of the yard. I'm pretty sure it was working. I mean, now I'm second guessing myself. I'm like, really, was it? You know, I go around checking all the lights, but did I just miss that? Just a reminder to be thorough. Make sure your signal lights are working before leaving the yard. I caught it right away, so just went back, replaced the bulb, we're good to go. Otherwise I'd have to buy a bulb myself on the road. And you know, and bring in a, an expense sheet and stuff and that's just easier to get it replaced right away. But off we go, 600 kilometers, six hours of driving. I guess that'd be uh, 360 miles, approximately. 
and then we'll unload in the morning and it'll be a little bit of a longer day tomorrow because we got to go up to Saskatchewan first. Coming into the town, or actually the city of Brandon here. Here's the sign. Don't actually go through the city, the city's over there. But we are gonna stop at Timmy's. You know, I haven't been through here in a very long time. The last uh, overnighter we took out west of Manitoba into Saskatchewan in this truck was to, uh, oh, what was that called again? Napanee, Napanee, or something up north. And we took the other highway then, Yellowhead. I haven't been through Brandon here in quite a while, probably over a year again. And though I may not have been through here recently, I remember where the Timmy's is, unless if they moved it. I'm just gonna say right now, they better not have moved it. It's just at the other end of town here, off on the right, there's a truck parking or truck stop right beside it and a Husky truck stop across the way. I can see the flag at the Husky truck stop already. We have 366 kilometers left to go to Regina, so we're not quite halfway there. Another half hour of driving and we're pretty close to halfway there. This truck rides like a Cadillac, but you already knew that. I can't stop talking about how nice these T680s are. You know, I was in the Volvo this morning getting ready. I wasn't filming yet. And the Volvo turned out not to be ready to go. So I had to jump into Blue 42 here. And just jumping from the newer Volvo, it was a Volvo, uh, was it 860, 870? It was the newer one with the big wide sleeper. It was the biggest Volvo you can get here. Jumping from that one straight into this one. This truck is absolutely better in my opinion. has a deeper sleeper and just more breathing space. Now I haven't been able to compare this truck to a Freightliner Cascadia or whatever the new Freightliners are because we don't have any of those. We don't have any Freightliners on our fleet. That's the kind of Volvo I was talking about right there. Did you catch a glimpse of it? But I hear that the Freightliner Cascadias are a little wider in the cab here and that they actually have quite a bit of space in there as well. The people who have them uh, really go to great lengths to defend them and their superiority in their mind. I don't really want to say one truck's better than the other because I just have my opinions. In my opinion, I like the Kenworth, but I'm also biased. You have to remember that. I am absolutely biased. I, I've always liked Kenworth. And speaking of Kenworth, Inland Kenworth got a new building here. Look at that. I don't think it's even open yet. Inland Kenworth, that's where Andy the Kenworth guy works at. That's the, the Winnipeg head office. I guess they got a, a second location here in Brandon now. Nice, good for them. Good for them, I like to see more Kenworths on the road. Okay, there's Smitty's right there, there's Husky over there. Oh, it's Esso now, sorry. Esso over there, there's also Esso over here. I guess they're both the same. And there's Timmy's right there. <laughs> And there's a sign up on that uh, light up there that says no right turn on red. I'm not sure why these people are on the shoulder. That's not a turning lane. 
I don't think they know that though. I haven't been here in a while, but I remember that because people always do that. <laughs> what do I know? I'm not from here. Maybe it is a turning lane. All right, guys, let's go. I want my Timmy's. So I'm gonna go around to the back, park in the back. Check on our load there. And then the sun's gonna go down right away. And I guess I'll see you in Regina. I'll probably stop in Balgoni. Balgoni Baloney. Turn right. You probably stop there and uh, spend the night there at the Flying J. See, nothing has changed so far. I wonder what that is. Is that truck parking? It looks like it's a private lot. Aha, you see, here we are. We park right back here. You gotta remember to leave a lane through here so the trucks can get through here. I, I remember. Uh, many times you'd come here and people would park right across here, not leaving any driveway for people to get through to the exit. And then you're stuck, you can't get out. It's a nice truck. I'm gonna park right here. People can go around that way if they want. I can't believe it's not fuller here. Usually there's a lot more people here. Ah, that seems good. That seems good. Oh, feels good to be out here again. Throw my jacket on real quick. Get out, check our load. I've got my driving slippers with me today. I take them with on these longer trips because they're easy to slip on and off to quickly run in and grab a coffee rather than, uh, like I got my boots over there, but they take so long to put on and off. <laughs> so call me lazy, that's okay. I can never get the zipper to work. Come on now. There we go. Let's go take a look at our load, shall we? Let's turn our headlights off while we're parked here. There it is. Looks like everything is still as it should be. Still looking good. Looking good. Looking good. Looks like a pretty old tarp on the back here, but it's doing the job. All right, I'm gonna run and grab my coffee. We'll talk to you a little later. changing the time zone Karen they're in central time right now in springtime they'll be in mountain time Saskatchewan doesn't change their clocks so half the year they're with us in Manitoba and the other half the year they're with Alberta out west whenever I take an overnight I always hit a blizzard we're on Trans Canada now we're uh, past Glenfell uh, Grenfell I believe that's what the town's called, headed west. I got another 56 kilometers or 30 miles to Balgoni. And at this rate, we're gonna be there in a few hours. And I bet you all the parking is taken up already. I wouldn't be surprised. Look at this guy. Look at this guy coming here. Yeah. What are you gonna do now? But oh, he's gonna hit this truck. Oh, that came close. Patience, buddy, patience, man. I know, this traffic is testing my patience too, but well, I should say the weather is. There's somebody, uh, well, like I said in the last clip, there's somebody at the front of this convoy, about 30 trucks up, that's excessively cautious. 
which is okay. Better than the opposite, like that pickup that just passed us. But uh, <laughs> his excessive cautiousness is getting on the nerves of people behind me. <laughs> Somebody's gonna end up in the ditch tonight yet. Uh, it won't be me. It won't be me. Hope not anyways, knock on wood. We're just passing by Indian Head now, if you guys are familiar with Trans Canada and Saskatchewan. We have another 45 kilometers, or maybe like 32 miles, so we haven't gone very far, but it's felt like an eternity. Grain hauler in front of me is getting impatient. I don't know if he's actually going to try and pass this truck in front of him, or when I see another vehicle getting impatient back there in the, in the passing lane. I think he's just stopping other reckless people from passing us, though so he, he's just been sitting in that passing lane there for a while, but he's not actually passing. He might be doing us all a favor just to stop people from flying past us and, you know, sideswiping us or losing control and hitting one of us. No idea. It's, you can't even tell where the lanes are right now. All you can do when you're in a situation like this is you see the edge of the ditch there off to the right and then you see the edge of the ditch off there sort of to the left. You just stay between those lines. Just stay right in the middle. This isn't the time to pass people. Believe me, we'd all like to be going faster. But it is what it is. Just take a deep breath. Oh, here comes somebody. Here comes somebody. This guy. Huh. Well, I guess that guy didn't hold that one back. I guess he got around him. I think he's coming past. Yeah, he's coming past. Oh dear. Okay. He passed the guy behind me. All right. Well, I don't know where my lane is, bud. So I'm just gonna stay where I know I can drive. I'm not getting sucked into the ditch. You wanna come past me? What is that, a U-Haul truck? If you hit me, buddy, I'm not gonna be happy. That's gonna kinda ruin my day. I'm trying to have a good day here. Some people's kids. You know? That's my new line. Uh, is he going to get past that grain hauler? I really hope we don't see an accident happen in front of us. So, getting by. I have no idea where the edge of the road is on that side, right? I don't think he knows either, because I can't see it, and I, I'm sitting up higher than him. So if I can't see it, he has no idea where that road ends, and if he gets sucked into that median, Probably gonna be a little while to wait for the tow truck. Here comes another one. Oh, he's clipping too. He's clipping. Don't wipe out and hit me, man. That's three now, right? Is that three people that have blown past us in this? Here comes another one. This one's only got one light. It looks like a motorcycle from here. Gotta fix your headlight, bud. Just giving her two. Oh, and another one's coming. We got another one. Okay, anyone wanna place bets or are any of these guys gonna hit the ditch? I think they're all gonna make it okay. Hmm. Wouldn't that be funny if there was a Mountie sitting here at this intersection, you know, just watching traffic, making sure people were behaving? Huh. Wouldn't that be funny? Uh, here come another two. There's one. There's another one. 
coming yet there. Oh, another one behind them yet. Man, you, nothing stops you Saskatchewan people. Man. You gotta get home to watch Yellowstone. Nothing's gonna stop you. Gotta hurry home, feed the horses, feed the cows. Somebody's impatient. Yikes. Just about hit my front fender there. It came a little close. Probably looked closer than it was, but. Oh, oh, and he can't get past him. And he's flashing his high beams at that guy there. Expecting him to get out of the way. Now yeah, he has his high beams on in that guy's mirror. As if it's his fault that the road is covered in snow and he can't go faster. Balgoni baloney. Let's see if there's any parking spots available here for us, shall we? That was a very long ride from Whitewood to here. Oh, and we got someone going extremely slow on the on the off ramp here. 500 meters, slight ride on Highway 46 and then. There she is. Oh, we haven't been here in a while. Oh, good, and it looks like there's lots of parking. Nice. I was not expecting that. That's awesome. I guess since the, the blizzard is over now, we got through it. I guess since we got through it, a lot of the drivers decided to keep going. On the right side. Not me, I want to park. I got to deliver in Regina in the morning. That's just like, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes down the road from here. Oh, there's lots of parking. Thank God. Nice, I was really, I was worried. On the right side, find J Travel Plaza number 863. All right. I always turn my headlights off in a parking lot, but leave your marker lights on uh, just so that you don't, you know, shine your lights into people's cabs and stuff. That's a little bit rude. Look at all this parking. Oh, oh. nice. Nice. Now, where are we going to park? I got to find the perfect spot. I don't do this very often anymore. And I remember my I remember my methods. I'm like a dog. I gotta circle the lot three times first before I park. We're gonna try to skip the circling part and just find a good spot right off the bat. Somewhere where no one's gonna back into me. Somewhere where I got quiet neighbors. I was thinking of that spot right over there, but that's a cattle hauler. Don't wanna park beside him, especially if he's loaded. Even if he's not loaded, he's probably gonna stink. It's not his fault, but uh, uh, I'm gonna go see if there's anything at the back over there. Nice truck though, eh? Nice. Oh, he kind of took up two spots though. That's not so nice. It's hard to see where the lines are when it's all full of snow. A lot of these guys are just happy to have made it here and find a parking spot. They don't care if they're straight or not. and Can't really blame them. How about this spot here? Is this open? There's a snow pile right there. Okay. Aha! I am gonna back in beside beside this Super B, I think. Uh -huh. 